I'm Cliff Watts, co-chair of the Westboro Cultural Council. Sitting to my right is Beth Schumann, who is the other co-chair. Uh, so we're here primarily to tell you a bit about our council and also to talk about Arts in Common, uh, which this, is, this chat of ours is going to wind up being the preamble for the broadcast that will be coming from Westboro TV. Uh, I have been involved in this process for some years. My wife was chair of the council for a time and frequently found little chores that I could help her with. So I guess I got to know more about the council than probably a lot of the spouses of other members did. Um, the council is a mechanism created by the state to distribute money in support of artistic performances, science adventures, and humanities projects. Basically, um, we wind up getting about $3,700 from the state of Massachusetts for this purpose. And the town of Westboro has been kind enough for the last several years to include in its town budget $2,000 specifically for the council, which we take like, gratefully to all of you voters and which we distribute as carefully as possible back to Westboro-based organizations. So the taxpayer dollars aren't going out of town in that regard. Um, since the whole point of this broadcast is arts in common, I suppose it would be useful to give you some background to how it came into being. Back in the time when my wife was chair of the council, we were walking around our neighborhood as we do frequently, and one of our neighbors, uh, who was frankly sort of an Archie Bunker figure, uh, wound up pointing down the street and saying, hey, they're moving into our neighborhood. That struck us as in a town where we have a very rich mix of population as kind of a sad thing to hear. And my wife subsequently discussed this at a council meeting. There was interest in the council in having some sort of an artistic festival going on in Westboro. Um, and that interest essentially morphed itself into creating Arts in Common, which will be celebrating its sixth performance, hopefully without rain. But what you're going to see in this broadcast are highlights from the performances and activities of 2012, which was also another gray, overcast, somewhat dampish day. Um, Beth here has been involved in the council longer, I guess, officially than I have. And perhaps she'd like to tell you something about how she got involved in this whole exercise. Originally um, came on board to help just with Arts and Common. Mm -hmm. But as I got involved with Arts and Common and talked to other members and talked with um, the people on the council, I decided that it was something I really wanted to be involved with year-round. Mm -hmm. So I've been a member now for the last four years and um, have worked on the Arts in Common and have been very involved in the grant process each, mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the council itself is one of many local councils <clears throat> that the Massachusetts Cultural Council has throughout the cities and states in Massachusetts. If each town doesn't have its own council, it's grouped with other councils mm -hmm. so that every single city and town is covered. And um, as you said, we receive money from the state, from the town of Westboro, and also from our fundraiser, Arts in Common. Um, the Local Cultural Council program is the largest grassroots cultural funding network in the nation, supporting thousands of community-based projects annually. So the Local Cultural Council actually consists of 329 councils mm -hmm. throughout the state. Um, it's a wonderful 
organization with extremely hardworking volunteers, and volunteers are the ones who administrate all of the work that the councils do. We have only nine people. And ten now. <laughs> okay. Even ten is a small number when we realize how much work we put into our Yeah, actually a council can be as fat as having 22 members, but that really seems uh, unwieldy. On the other hand, if any of you watching are interested, please feel free to get in contact with us and we will be very happy to see if we can help you out in the process of getting involved and, and being a role player in this exercise. I should mention that we have been lucky enough over the years to have two things happen. One, Arts in Common takes place and can be heard primarily because the Westboro schools lend us sound equipment and they also loan us chairs and tables which are happily and gratefully utilized. Um, we also have made a practice of having a member of the high school become an, an associate member which gives him or her a non-voting situation but allows you know, for the input of some younger kids who occasionally can help us out by keeping the old graybeards focused on what should be going on. They don't vote for giving out grants, nor do they have a role that is any bigger than the one that they perform at Arts in Common, but it is a way that we get them you know, somewhat involved in community service, and certainly they're a great help to us. Um, the other thing which I should mention is that we are all appointed by the Board of Selectmen. I'm not sure that the Chief of Police or anyone else runs background te tests to prove that we're all good citizens, but uh, I think that can be taken as fairly likely. It's certainly my, I, my exposure to m folks in the, this council and other councils is that they're a bunch of really hardworking, energetic, and well-motivated people. Okay. Absolutely. We have people from various backgrounds, which is particularly helpful in bringing new views mm -hmm. and different views on how to do things and how to change things and to keep up with newer ideas mm -hmm. as far as um, having people inform us of their knowledge of the arts, not only in Westboro, but in towns that are close by. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you said, our, our money goes to organizations that are either based in Westboro or perform in Westboro. Mm -hmm. So our money does come back to Westboro in the end. True enough. One of the things I should mention is that last week we had a grant reception wherein we honored 21 grantees for the coming year giving out nearly $13,000, which represents a jump of about 40% above anything we've done before. And that uh, was made possible. Frankly, we wound up, as I said, getting about 4000 and then about 2000 then $2,000 from the town of Westboro. So the balance of what we were able to grant came out of Arts and Common proceeds. And those proceeds are largely constructed this way. We have founding <coughs> sponsors who are kind enough every year to renew their, their pledge of support. And we have advertisers who populate our program. I think I have a copy of that tucked in here somewhere. Yeah, the advertise, this is last year's program book. If you, uh, look on the back of it, we credit our founding sponsors as well as one corporate sponsor. But selling advertising in here, as well as uh, having people who are selling their crafts that they've created, frequently jewelry, but also woodwork, paintings, for photographs and clothing and various other things that have shown up in, in, the, in the artisan area. We essentially, we, we hold Arts in Common on Bay State Green, as many of you will already realize from having been with us in past Arts in Commons, or having been directed to it by the sign, the message board that usually is displayed by the circle. Um, 
but those those are the main sources of our, our income from arts in common, donations and rentals of artisan vendor space for the, the pop-up tents that are used and <coughs> advertising in, in the program booklet here. Um, we also um, have children's activities, food, and some demonstrations at Arts mm -hmm. in Common. Glass blowing in particular has been done over the past few years, as well as chair caning. Mm -hmm. And um, we enjoy having the demonstrations at Arts in Common. Um, each year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and we have more artisans who apply. We actually already have some applications for our next year. We have four applications that have come in already. Mm -hmm. So the word is getting out and people who have been here before talk to other people and um, pretty soon we won't be able to continue <laughs> to have it at Arts at uh, the Commons at Bay State because we'll be too big. So we will be looking for a uh, larger space eventually. Um, and hope for a, a that, sunny that, day. That, as you that is a real problem. Uh, we have been blessed so far by having free use, uh, donated use of some of the vacant stores that are but based at uh, Green. One of them, I understand, is in the process now of being rented, so that one is probably not going to be available to us for this fall. And if we are essentially forced out of that space by lack of some shelter from the, the rains that appear to be part of what happens in late mm -hmm. September, early October. Uh, we'll have to go somewhere else and fight those things. We have made provisions, frankly, with the Mill Pond School to use it as a backup site. Uh, so far, we haven't had to do that, but I think the day is coming when we were going to have to find a new home for this process. Anyhow, that's a bit of background. Uh, so the Arts in Common is, is our large fundraising um, effort that we do during the year, but awarding the grants is the really that's, that's important and main purpose created. of why the council was created. And we encourage people to apply for grants. We advertise um, all the time in the papers, um, online, the applications are available online. They <clears throat> are quite easy to fill out. And there are applications for performers and there are applications for artisans. Mm -hmm. So we do that fairly early, pretty close to the beginning of the year. And um, people have several months to prepare. I would suggest that you not go after those forms right now because we will be at our next meeting considering whether we need to change any of the rates and charges that are made for advertising and for tent space and so forth. Uh, so be a bit patient with us and I would say after the early days of March we probably will be ready for you. <coughs> right. One thing I didn't talk to earlier, which I should have done, I mentioned this rather prejudiced comment that we got in our neighborhood. And one of the people who was one of our founding sponsors, when we were talking about having this arts festival, said, well, why don't we, you know, we all have arts in common, and that's how it got the name. And frankly, as you come and see performers who are Chinese in origin or Indian in origin, uh, or cookies from Austria or various and sundry other things which have been available at Arts in Common, it is fairly clear that this is a festival that it utilizes and I think frankly celebrates the many nationalities, religions, and, and sort of origins that, that, that come here and live in Westboro. It's something we're proud of and we're hoping to you know, keep it well recognized. Absolutely. Yep. So that's our um, information for you so that you understand a little history of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, the local cultural councils, and our Arts and Common Festival. We, we, we appreciate you watching this, this program, 
and hope you will enjoy the balance of it now that we get out of the way and you can see some of what really goes on at Arts in Common. Uh, thank you for your attention and if you're interested at all in joining us either as a member of the council or as a, either a worker for Arts in Common or a sponsor of us, all of these are possibilities, so please feel free to be in contact via our website. Uh, you can also you know, call 366-3030 at Town Hall and leave messages or just address something to the Westboro Cultural Council at Town Hall and we'll show up in our mailbox and we will respond to you. In any event, thank you for your attention and interest. Thank you.